So I'm going to be showing you how to dock with the space station in Kerbal Space Program. Creating docking functionality in Kerbal Space Program is very simple because of these parts over here, the Clampatron docking ports. In order to dock, all you have to do is have one of these ports face down connected to another port. And you don't even have to build them like this. If you have them in space, they'll just clamp right to each other, hence the name Clampatron Dock Port. So let's assume we already have a space station we want to dock to. All we have to do is then build our vessel. So our theoretical space station, not so theoretical really, has a Clampatron Docking Port Senior, or a 2.5 meter variant. And what we want to do here is attach our pod. So let's just use a Mark II lander can. See, I always like this design. Now, obviously this is what we want to end up with. If you watched my last video, getting into orbit, as we built the vessel, you learned that we want to build it from the end of its lifetime backwards. So this is what we want to dock with. Maybe we want some extra, but just looking at the top part, we want this bear. Now, an interesting functionality of these docking ports is you can put something else on top of it, and it functions as a decoupler. It will eject the object and will not redock with it, so it functions as a multi-use decoupler. So, might be a good idea to put a nose cone on top, because we will need nose cone during ascent all the same. Now, let's give it some fuel, because it still needs the circularization stage. So we have our lander can, our fuel tank, and we need to pick an engine. We can just use the poodle here. And granted, it's very awkward looking, but it's also a bit bare. Now, one thing with performing an orbital rendezvous, which is what we'll need, is you might be in space a long time. So it's always a good idea to pack some extra solar panels so you don't run out of power. And docking can be very tricky, so we can use these RCS to help. And if you already know about reaction rows, you know you want to place them right in the center of mass. Same thing with RCS. Now, this has a little bit of monopropellant, but that, that's good. That is all we need. Because for our orbital adjustments, we'll just be using the engines. The RCS is really only for docking. Now, if we look at our TWR here, we have a good 0.3. That's, that's pretty good, but that's at sea level. We're not worried about at sea level. We're, that will rise significantly. Now we can create our ascension stage. So we'll pick a decoupler. Engine. We'll turn this off. And our engine. We should be able to use the skipper. 0.96. We'll just use the six of these. Now, you can get very creative with your designs. For example, what I could do here is attach six more boosters up here, which will provide a lot of extra thrust. 
However, if you do decide to put your boosters above other boosters, an important thing to note is to have the area directly below your boosters clear, because otherwise it would make this nose cone overheat. But I won't do that. I don't know exactly what's going to happen if I do. So I'm just going to forget it for now. Now we reorder our staging stack. We have the engines. Alright, all good. We need pilot scientists. Now let's double check our TWR. 216, 104. That's good enough. So we can go ahead and save and launch. So let's double check. Let's uh, go look at our space station, see where we're docking, and hear it. Oh. Well, that's that's not right. It, it's it's not a dinky little space station. It's it's big and magnificent. He's clearly got it wrong. Oh well. For the most part, the ascent is all the same. Set throttle to max, turn on stability assist, and do the gravity turn. So we can go ahead and launch. And do a little bit of a gravity turn. Keep an eye on our orbit. Keep an eye on our fuel levels. Gee, that was close, that was close. Only four survives. <laughs> Alright, what's our TWR? 124, 125, we're good. Yeah, this design works. I can do a little more of a gravity turn now. Alright, still climbing. All right, more of the gravity turn. And we just want to level off at about 100. That should do. All right, now we point towards the horizon and just keep burning. At this point, if we want to, we can deploy our solar panels. Not that we'll need it, because this engine happens to have an alternator. So it will produce energy as long as we are burning it. It's not a good reason to burn it, but it is an added bonus. And we can see our orbit getting bigger. Alright, and as our periapsis starts rising... Alright, we've got a good... It's a little eccentric, but it should be fine. And as you can tell, our target has a higher orbit than us, so what we'll need to do, and this is actually a bit later, is something called a Hohmann transfer, where you essentially enlarge your orbit until it is somewhat close or intersects with your target. So for now, what we can do is just left-click and set as target. So as you can see, its orbit turns green, and you can see we have helpful icons here that tell us exactly what we're working with. So the first thing we need to focus on is our ascending and descending node. This tells us our relative inclination, and first thing we will need to do is match our plane. So if you go to advanced orbital info, you can see our inclination is 1.2. Now obviously, the inclination of our space station is a, a bit different. It's different by 2 degrees. That's not, that's not too bad. If it was off by 80 degrees, then I'd, I'd really be worried. Um, so what we just do here, for the best precision, what we'll do is at the descending node, we add maneuver. And we got to make this fast because we're about to hit it. Keep an eye on the descending node. Select the maneuver and 
and push the normal or anti-normal buttons until it is close to zero. So that's good enough right there. So now that we have our maneuver set up, we can get out of map view real quick, real quick. And we will need to point to our maneuver. Right on the dot and burn half the burn time before. Four, three, two. So we want to center our burn right on it. So now, now that that maneuver is done, good, we have matched planes. Now, the next thing to do is to create a maneuver somewhere ahead of you is a good idea. As long as your orbit is inside, it's always a good idea to put it ahead of you. We add a new maneuver, and we want to burn prograde. We want our orbit to intersect with the other one. So we just pull on the marker here until it intersects, and you see we get this orange marker. This is the closest point we will be at to our space station's orbit. And this other marker is where the space station will be at when we reach that point. Now, obviously, that is not very good. It is on the complete opposite side of the planet. So we want to adjust that. So now you can see we have a second marker, which is the second closest point because it intersects twice. So what we can do is mess with this just a little to get it to match up if needed to, we can move this maneuver. Now this is what's called a phasing trajectory, which is where we change the parts of the maneuver so that we intersect at just the right time. So obviously this is not doing. What we can do is right click here and click this button to add an orbit. Well, that, that's not good either. It just it snapped right back. We can do it again. Now we probably want to pay attention to this orange one because it seems to be closer. Snap the button again. That's pretty close. So now we move this forward even more until they're right on top of each other. Now if we hover over this, you can see... Separation 9.8 kilometers. That's not too good. What we can do is fine tune it here by tabbing this forward. And you can see our separation goes down 2.9, 0.7, 1.6. Let's get it even more precise 0.65432. 2 seems to be our lowest. So we'll stick to that. Now we have our maneuver in two hours. Now obviously, we don't want to wait that long. So all we have to do here is just fast forward. Now, one thing you might want to do at this point is get rid of this stupid nose cone. So all you have to do is right click on the docking port. It's kind of hard to see here. But here's the docking port. Here's the nose cone. You just have to click undock. Pida and the nose cone is all the way all the way up there now. Good job, you got rid of the nose cone. So now we just warp to this node. And here we are. Oh. Oh, that that's our nose cone. There you go. That is our nose cone. So now we want to point in the direction of the maneuver, so we just get it to line up here. On the dot. Now we need to be prepared to burn 8 seconds. And we're going to be pretty close to the node to do that. So we just divide this by two. Four, we need to start burning four seconds before. So we just speed up a little bit so we can get there. 
four now. Four, three, two, one. And that's good. So now, what is our intersect? W would you look at that? It's 0.2 kilometers. Now, this relative speed, 322 meters per second. Yeah, that's pretty fast, but it's nothing our engine can't handle. So what we can do is warp closer to it. So if we warp here... You can see we are very close to our space station, our magnificent space station, and there it is. So now, now that you're close enough, you want to have your marker set to target. You'll notice you didn't have this setting before, and it's because you didn't have a target before. Now that we do, this shows us exactly where we are relative to our target instead of our orbit or the surface. So we can just flip over. We want to point retrograde because you know retrograde is opposite the direction you're moving. So you want to burn retrograde to stop moving, right? So we want to stop moving relative to our dinky little space station. So we want to get this speed to zero. Luckily that's not too hard with an engine like this. However, you still want a bit of speed, because we still have a bit of diff distance between us. So let's narrow it down to 100 meters per second. Now if you go back to our orbit here, you, you can see it, it's, it's a little messed up here. But not to worry, because you'll, you'll have yourself corrected just in time. So now we can speed up, get a little closer. Now, at this point, we're really speeding up here. We want to slow down even more. We'll say 50 meters per second. Now, we'll move closer again. Or, rather, we'll let it glide closer. 6,000 meters, 5,000 meters, 4,000 meters. Now, you notice if it keeps going, it's going to breeze right past us. We don't want that. That's why we want to slow down. So, let's slow down to 10 meters per second. And we can burn a lot more slowly this time. And you notice our, our relative speed is changing. But that's because our orbits are... I mean, not anymore, but they were pretty different. You can see there is some uh, desynchronous parts there. So if this is too agonizingly slow for you, what you can do is aim towards this marker here. And burn just a little more. That'll speed us up. However, we want to, we don't want to run into it, or we don't want to just fly right past it. So we want to go back to our retrograde marker. We eventually want this to reach zero at some point in time. Because otherwise, we might have a different vector that doesn't exactly match where we want to go. So you can see it's closing fast. Let's bring it back down to 10. Now we're definitely closing in here. 600 meters. Let's bring it down to 5 meters per second. 5 is usually a safe bet, because anything under 6 meters per second, and hopefully nothing's gonna blow up. So you can see our anti-target and, and retrograde markers are very far off. So to kind of normalize that, let's keep running prograde until our relative velocity is just about zero. 
And then all we have to do now is burn towards our target. And we'll just stick to the 5 meters per second. Now as you can tell, this does take a lot of effort and patience. So don't uh, feel bad if you don't get it the first try. Because you can always pause and revert. Assuming you didn't set it to the hardest game mode. So we're about 200 meters in closing. Now we're a lot closer. Let's tune it down to maybe 3 meters per second. You know me. I don't, I don't like to take a lot of risks. So we'll just wait for our magnificently wonderful space station to uh, come towards us a bit more. We'll dumb it down to 2 meters per second. Now as you can tell, we weren't perfect, we weren't aimed perfectly at it, but that'll happen when you don't have a computer doing stuff for you. And... Alright. It's really hard to tell, but here's what we can do. We can use the right bracket key, and we switch to our space station. So what will help is turning on the lights. And you notice the docking port's got a little light here. That definitely helps. So we can switch back to our rocket we're trying to rendezvous with. You can see some of the lights on the space station. We can right-click this and set the docking port itself as the target. Which is a really good idea. And we can right-click our docking port and click Control from here, which makes it a lot easier. So since we have this RCS now, we can start using it. So, we want to aim... You want to look at it from a bird's eye view, and you want to kind of face the same way as your space station, whatever you're trying to dock with. Alright, we kind of got it. Ish. Alright. So now all I need to do is turn on RCS, translate backwards, but that didn't help in my case. I picked a very weak RCS, and it wasn't powerful enough to translate my ship towards the docking port. So I ended up having to go back and forth using the engine, and that took a long time, but I did end up getting it docked. And... And there you go. See, it kind of just, like, grips itself, and now we are actually docked. So, yeah. See, this space station is magnificent, can't you tell? And that's it. We, you, we have successfully docked, and we are now a single entity orbiting Kerbin. So, yeah, it's just... It's just that simple. I mean, really, it is simple. Once you do it once, you, you've, you've got the hang of it. It's just, it's just tedious, but it's worth it in the end. And you know what? It's a whole lot easier rendezvousing to, to an actual body like the moon. But, I mean, this, this is important. You will, you will need this skill. So that is how you dock with a space station in Kerbal Space Program. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful, and subscribe for more stuff like this.